Brad, talk to us about the impetus for this lawsuit. Emily, I think now more than ever, we are living in a time when seeing you know, some of the large tech platforms not act in the best interest of the, the broad kind of consumer population is a real issue. And what we are seeing is scammers are taking advantage of these platforms, both things related to COVID, but frankly, this has been going on as it relates to cryptocurrencies, as it relates to Ripple, and specifically XRP. It's been going on for well over a year. And for us, it was time, kind of enough is enough. You know, uh, we had worked on this case earlier in the year, waited a bit, uh, given that some of the things were happening in the world, and felt like now is the time to, you know, to not whine about this, but actually to, to do something about it. You two told us in a statement, we take abuse of our platform seriously and take action quickly when we detect violations of our own policies like scams and impersonations. Um, you know, they've been pointing out how many millions of videos uh, they've been removing. Why do you think the action that they're taking is not enough? Well, Emily, I can tell you firsthand. Uh, I can give many examples of where we have reported known fraud, known scams that are occurring rep with accounts representing to be me, to be personally, and it's taken them weeks, if not months, to remove them. There have been times when we followed up three, four, or five times and you know, we're met with resistance. And look, it isn't unique to just YouTube. This is happening with other players in the industry. But what you're seeing is scammers are going more to, uh, going more to YouTube because they're the least effective at, at getting them taken down. So, you know, uh, there's many examples I could give. You know, even today, I sent out an email to all the employees at Ripple, and in my email, I included two examples that were live this morning. And I can tell we got their attention because during the course of the day, they took one of them down. So if this is a known problem and they have not been responsive, and I'm frankly, I'm thrilled that even filing the lawsuit has gotten their attention a little bit. We'll continue to follow that, Brad. I do want to ask for your broader thoughts on what's going on in the cryptocurrency industry in general through the pandemic. We've seen a bit of a rally in Bitcoin. What's interesting, I think you are seeing a flight, and the people have uh, talked about the kind of flight to, hey, a non-inflationary asset. At a time that the U.S. government and certain governments around the world are printing trillions of dollars of stimulus, uh, obviously very inflationary and devaluing fiat currencies. And, you know, this calendar year, the crypto market overall is up about 11 percent. Gold is up 13 percent. Uh, by comparison, the S&P 500 is down 15 to 20 percent. So I, I think you're seeing a recognition that uh, digital assets, uh, that they are non-inflationary and as a store of value can be very effective. Uh, and I think you're going to see that play out over the coming you know, 12 to 36 months. That certainly happened after the 2008, the kind of Great Recession of 2008, 2010. After that, you saw, frankly, the, the birth of Bitcoin and you know, using gold as a proxy historically. Gold is up about 100 percent in the 24 months after the Great Recession.